So back in January, Utah's Republican Governor Spencer Cox, this weirdo pictured behind me, signed HB 257 into law, which is a transphobic bill that polices the bathroom usage of trans people and prohibits them from using the bathroom of the gender identity that they identify with. Now, of course, this was passed under the pretense of protecting women from men invading their spaces, but it literally does the opposite because if TikTok and Instagram influencer Leo McCallan, for example, known as the Gravel Bro, decided to go to Utah and he visited the Salt Lake City Airport, he would be forced to use the women's bathroom. Why? Well, because he's a trans guy. That dude is now forced to use the women's bathroom because Republicans say that's where he should be. So, uh, so much for keeping men out of women's spaces. Good job, Republicans. Bravo. But all of this hysteria over bathrooms, it doesn't just affect trans people. It also affects cis people, too, sometimes, because one woman actually shared a traumatizing experience that she had while she was in Las Vegas, where she was followed into the bathroom and harassed by a woman who thought that she was a man. But she wasn't. She was a cis woman just trying to use the bathroom, minding her own business, but because she had a short haircut, a pixie haircut, the transvestigator in question assumed that she was a guy going into the bathroom to perv on women. So these kinds of bathroom bills are idiotic because they foster that type of behavior, this climate of paranoia. And on top of that, they're also incredibly difficult, if not impossible to enforce, because how do you determine that people are using the bathroom that they're supposed to be using? Are you going to check their IDs when they need to shit, inspect their genitals? Like, how exactly do you enforce this? Now, Utah thinks that they came up with a solution, and that right there is going to be the focus of this particular video today, because the law officially went into effect on May 1st, and predictably, it has been a complete and total disaster, which is, you know, what I think most people could have told you. Hence why I said predictably, but I guess they're surprised. Like, we've got some surprised Pikachu faces in Utah today after seeing the disaster that they created. But first, here's how the law works. So the Salt Lake City Tribune reports, quote, The law goes on to require the state auditor's office to establish a process to receive and investigate alleged violations of this chapter by a government entity and then notify that entity. If the violation isn't resolved, the auditor is required to refer the issue to the Utah Attorney General's office, which can then impose fines up to $10,000 per violation per day. And as a result, Utah Auditor John Dougal created an online reporting tool to comply with Morgan Republican Representative Kira Birkeland's sex-based designations for privacy, anti-bullying, and women's opportunities, or HB 257. In other words, they created a snitch line, so that way normal people can LARP as hall monitors and make sure that trans people aren't using the bathrooms that they're not supposed to be using. And if that's the case, they can report them. They can call the manager of trans people, which is apparently the uh, Utah Auditor's Office. But I mean, is this not incredibly creepy? Because as Utah State Senator Jennifer Plume put it, apparently Utah's solution to people feeling unsafe in restrooms is to encourage folks to take photos of and focus extreme attention on the private parts of others who are taking care of a biological need to eliminate waste. What could possibly go wrong? I know, right? The implication is that this law was needed because trans people are supposedly bathroom predators and they pose a risk to women and people around them. But this law could actually embolden real predators who can pretend like they're just investigating a suspected trans person using the wrong bathroom if they're caught peeping. So this law wasn't just passed under false pretenses. It is going to unironically make people feel less safe in the bathroom in Utah because of the way that it was written. And I don't know that you can write this in a way that makes people feel safe, but the goal is to be transphobic and mission accomplished. But the snitch line has been open for about a week, and uh, I want you to take a wild guess as to how it's been going so far. Just take a guess. How do you think it's been working out for them? Well, as AP explains, transgender activists have flooded the Utah tip line created to alert state officials to possible violations of a new bathroom law with thousands of hoax reports in an effort to shield trans residents and their allies from any legitimate complaints that could lead to an investigation. The onslaught has led the state official tasked by law with managing the tip line Utah Auditor John Dougal to bemoan getting stuck with the cumbersome task of filtering through fake complaints while also facing backlash for enforcing a law he had no role in passing. Quote, no auditor goes into auditing so they can be the bathroom monitors, Dougal said Tuesday. I think there were much better ways for the legislature to go about addressing their concerns rather than this ham-handed approach. 
So I love how the auditor of Utah is like, this is my life now. God damn, what did I get myself into? Because he very clearly doesn't support the law, but he is forced to, to, I guess, go through the snitch line, set up the snitch line because that's what the legislation or the law now requires. So, yeah, uh, I kind of feel bad for him, but, you know, somebody's got to do the dirty work, bud, and it's unfortunately you, John. Now, we're going to get to some of the specific reports submitted to the snitch line in a moment, but first, I just want to tell you some numbers here that might surprise you. So there were approximately a total of 10,000 individual reports submitted to the snitch line. Now, out of all of those, the number of reports that are actually seemingly legitimate is, wait for it, zero. <laughs> zero legitimate reports. And here's just a small taste of some of the reports that were submitted. Someone reported Rick Astley and posted the lyrics to Never Gonna Give You Up. This person just said, suck my transgender balls, mad respect, short but sweet, gets the point across, love that. Uh, this person submitted lines from the movie Labyrinth. And we've also got a report about Matt Gates allegedly following a high school girl into the bathroom. Uh, this person submitted a complaint about Sarah Huckabee Sanders as a suspected trans male in violation of the bathroom law. This person just attached an image from B-Movie because, yes, you can actually upload images, which is a very bad idea. Uh, this person just uploaded a bunch of ROMs for Nintendo games. And listen, if you know Nintendo, they are very protective about their IPs. So if they find out that Utah's government has illegal ROMs on their servers, they're going to be pretty pissed and might take legal action. So Beware of that, Utah lawmakers. But there is one more complaint that I do want to share with you, and that's my own. And this is actually a serious one. The other ones were trolling. This one's a real one. So I submitted a picture of Kira Birkeland, who's the Republican sponsor of this legislation, because I actually did find her to be in violation of this law. Specifically, at the Salt Lake City Airport, I heard an incredibly loud fart come from... I'm laughing at my own jokes. This is embarrassing. I heard an incredibly loud fart come from the women's bathroom while I was standing outside policing it to ensure no trans person could enter. Subsequently, Kira Birkeland comes walking out, the only person in the women's bathroom at the time. Since it's uncommon for women to have the physiological capacity to fart that loud, I deduced that she must be trans. I then explained how I reasonably attempted to remedy the situation. I confronted her and told her to fart in front of me to prove that it was her asshole the fart allegedly came from. Uh, she refused, of course. I didn't explain that, though, but she refused. Uh, as for evidence, I wrote that I have a recording of the fart in question, which I do. And if you heard it, too, you'd come to the same conclusion that I did, that the fart could not have come from the asshole of somebody assigned female at birth. And then, of course, I signed it as Busimus Maximus and used my footbucker69 at AOL.com email, and I submitted my complaint. Now, I'm sure that John Dougal over at Utah's auditor's office is going to say that I'm just trolling and that's not a real complaint. But, John, I know you've seen a lot of illegitimate complaints. That one is legitimate. It's your first real complaint. That is an actual violation. Now, if you also have a legitimate violation, I'll link to that complaint line down below, and I would highly encourage you all to uh, share the very real violations that you submitted in the comment section down below, because uh, I'm anxious to read them. But on a more serious note, do they honestly think that it would end <laughs> any other way? Like, I'm struggling uh, to imagine them being shocked by this. You know, other states had attempted to do the same thing and got the same exact results. So, I mean, what exactly did they expect? As Aaron Reed explains, in February, Indiana Attorney General Todd Rokita released a snitch line to report schools. Instead, it received copies of Godzilla holding a trans flag based. In March of 2023, the Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey launched a website for reporting gender from in care clinics. Within a month, the website was taken down after being flooded with the B-movie script. That is so funny to me for some reason. Uh, in Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin launched a tip line to report divisive teaching practices. That tip line received very few legitimate reports and instead was flooded by Gen Z for change activists. The website was taken down quietly at the end of the year. So <laughs> this has happened in every other state that created a transphobic snitch line. But Utah Republicans naively thought that they'd get the snitch line that actually succeeded. Amazing. But I honestly don't think that they're that dumb. They may be hateful, but they're not that dumb, right? And the reason why they keep doing this and Republicans keep creating these dumbass tip lines is because there really is no other way to enforce these blatantly discriminatory policies. So it's the only thing that they can do. 
right? They try to foster paranoia towards the group that they're trying to demonize and turn the public against them, but nobody's buying it, clearly. So it's another fail, but in closing, this law is a pathetic joke that perfectly demonstrates how unserious Utah's state government is. They could be passing laws that address poverty or housing or health care or anything that's actually serious, but instead they're trying to get people in their own state to police each other's bathroom usage. How fucking embarrassing. Penis and balls vagina. Penis and balls vagina. P word and balls vagina. P word and balls vagina. Ass gum. Ass gum. Ass gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.